Hello, are you out there? I'm Mark with HFD and I've got Toxic Players in Complicit DM. This is coming to us from Miss K Black, who gave me the okay to read the story. Thank you so much for sharing. I unfortunately have had a little sinus infection this week. I haven't made any videos and I'm still not feeling very good. I can just feel like this pressure everywhere. And my voice is probably a little weird, but eh, let's just do it. My channel, it dies if I don't make new content. So here we go. Hi everyone, this is my first post about my experiences with TTRPGs, so I'm a bit nervous, but here we go. I'll preface this with saying that I'm a black woman, which will unfortunately be important. There were four others in the party who knew this, but won't use names. It's very kind of you to not like out prejudiced people. <laughs> is that what? I'm jumping to conclusions. Let's go. I'm relatively new to D&D and wanted to try a module I thought was really interesting. After searching, I found a paid campaign online, and after being invited to a session zero, the DM let me know that this campaign had been going on for a couple of years. And recently, a player had left, and they wanted to fill the spot he occupied. That is a lot jumping into a multi-year running campaign. I mean, that would be difficult for, for anyone. It's exciting, but there's a lot of pre-existing relationships there between the characters, the players. Wow. Okay. I was worried about joining as a player and their PCs become close over that time and I didn't want to feel like an addendum or tag along, but was assured the party was friendly and welcoming and that they were excited about a new player joining. That's what I said. I, the same thing you were worried about, I would be worried about, yes. With that, I happily accepted was invited to their Discord channel and made a character that I really loved. So this is VTT, which I only point out because it's possible just by the sound of your voice, it, no one would know your ancestry, right? Relative to everyone else, I would guess. When you can't see somebody, <laughs> when, and when the whole world's blind, what difference does it matter what color your skin is, right? Unless it does for some people. Well, let's find out. The DM said he would introduce her during the next session and knew exactly how he's going to do it. He gave me a little info so that I could be ready when it was time for my character introduction. Sure. Yeah, you need a little... Your, your character needs to know a little bit about the world that everyone else has been adventuring in for two years. Just to, you know, bring your character to life with everyone. Yeah, sure. The next session came and I was very excited. It was time for my character to be introduced, but it didn't happen. For reference, the sessions usually lasted between three and a half to five hours. I was disappointed, but I figured it was nice to meet the party and see how they play and interact together and would be better prepared for the next session, better prepped. The DM messaged me and apologized and let me know that the upcoming session would have a great character intro and that he'd give her a nice spotlight to try and make up for it. The next session came, and it wasn't until the last half hour that my character finally made an appearance and was able to get a few sentences in before the session wrapped. The third session was more or less the same, and my character was around while the party minus one, a player A who was genuinely interested in my character, more or less ignored her. I'm going to read that sentence again. This sounds crazy already, but. The third session that you're a part of was more or less the same as the last session where you only got a couple sentences to talk. And my character was around while the party minus one. Player A, who was genuinely interested in my character, more or less ignored her. Okay. I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to call a timeout. When you're bringing in a new, a new player, or character, you bring them in the next session. You, they don't sit and listen for a session. No. You, I, I, and I understand if you can't just instantly drop them in in the first five minutes of play, but in the first 30 minutes to an hour, definitely it's got to happen. Whatever transition caused the player to leave, or if no one's left, you just bring in a new player, you spend that 15, 20, 30 minutes setting up the situation, getting the party to a place where it's realistic they're going to find a new, a new character in their world. 
You got to think about it. You're role playing. Your characters are somewhere. They're in a dungeon. Hey, there could be a prisoner. There could be a statue that someone lifts a medallion off of that's made out of gold and the statue comes back to life and there's your gosh darn character right in the middle of the desert it could happen or you're in a town or a village anyway and there's hundreds or thousands of other people around the idea that they kept you waiting for the equivalent of seven eight hours before you even got introduced over the first two sessions you only get a few sentences no beyond which when you're introducing a new character you role play around that character for five, ten minutes as they are talking to the either through the DM role playing or meeting the other characters, having conversations. You you take some time there to to let it breathe. Um, I'm not sure what happened in the third session, to be quite honest. Um, just the way that's worded. There's a player who was gen genuinely interested in your character, but you were still more or less ignored, or the character that was interested wasn't there. Listen, that's um, really poor DMing, and it's extremely poor um, politeness, just at a human level, to leave someone sitting for seven hours. They're there to play with you. It's just... That's just... Uh, sorry, there wasn't an extra chair at the table. You couldn't sit down. Our bad. <laughs> it's a VTT. Ah. Okay, that's a bad taste. That's, that's, that's a really bad taste. Okay, here we go. It didn't take long for a clean pattern of behavior to emerge. Player A was very courteous and tried to include me as much as possible and our characters got close, but had no issues with anything toxic that was happening. Okay. Player B was an extreme monologuer and would often talk for long stretches of time and often dragged encounters by describing in excruciating detail when he, what he was going to do and then added in little to nothing actually being done. Player C was also a monologuer and constantly endangered himself and the party by doing the most ridiculous things in the name of, that's what my character would do. That's how, that's how they sound. Um, I think you, you could verify that. Player D, who is this post is about, it seemed like the party and a lot of the campaign revolved around him. He often dedicated what the party was going to do dictated what the party was going to do and if he wanted to do something the rest of us didn't want to do we'd end up doing it anyways you have a real mixed bag there of the other four players um it's nice that one player is courteous and encouraging to you sounds like potentially they could become a long-term role play friend or partner you know acquaintance that you try and get into other sessions with down the road in your trajectory in the, in the years to come. And you keep track of those people who are nice, courteous, good role players. Um, there's nothing you could do about uh, that's what my characters could do in that, guys. Yeah. Um, you're going to find a little bit of that in any campaign. I think we all know that. You, you can't completely dodge that bullet. Because I'll tell you, any party I've ever been in or I've been DM for, there's a couple people who are just quieter, and there are a couple people who talk more. And, there, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. So, uh, we'll see. Let's keep reading. <laughs> I'll admit that despite this, I continued to play on for several months because I was really attached to my character, and I hate not seeing things through to the end. I brought up the issues I had with the DM a few times, but they were never really resolved. Towards the end, playing started to feel like a chore, and despite having saved the party multiple times and had won over some pretty important NPCs, I felt like I did when I started. So just, a, just an outlier, just a, an addendum to the party. Okay. Finally, the DM said he'd have to cancel the next few sessions because of school, which was fine. And during one of the last canceled sessions, the party decided to get together and hang out on Discord and play Jackbox, which wasn't uncommon. A nice touch. Sometimes when you can't play your role-playing game as a group, you can still play other games. So that's really cool. It was during this that Player D decided to make an extremely offensive joke. It's already, it's already making me sweat <laughs> just what this jackass is going to say. Which were very uncomfortable and which made the rest of the party laugh. I tried to interject but was just talked over and after a few more, he then used one that contained the N-word several times. Yes, 
with the hard R, and my jaw hit the floor. Everyone else was laughing, and I was finally able to say, that was racist, what the actual fuck he just did. Dismiss me while no one else spoke up. They moved on to a new topic, and I quit. Oh, jeez, Louise. You know, I'm trying to think. You, you are around people where saying racist things, even as a joke, you know, being racist, but trying to be funny being racist, right, um, <laughs> isn't okay. And I think about my household, my kids. Now, I grew up in the, you know, late, late 70s, early 80s, you know, think, you know, living in the rural stuff. You would hear jokes about three people walk into a bar. One is of this, one is of this, one is of this. That was super common. I am happy to say that over the last 40 plus years since I was a little kid, those kind of jokes don't exist in our world anymore. And in that sense, although I don't want to in any way claim that bigotry and racism are cured because they're not, they're clearly still everywhere. Um, the general acceptance of that kind of thing is way way more spread out. I can tell you in my household, if someone used the N-word um, in any, even like a false saying of it, you would get shouted down for real, for real. Um, I can say in my D&D &D groups that I play with, I DM for one and I play with another. In the years that I've known some of these people, I've never once heard that. I've never heard the F-word used, uh, you know, uh, F-A-G. It, um, so I know that you can find groups of people where whatever prejudices people might hold in their heart, they know that it is not appropriate to put it out there with everyone else. And I always try and be forgiving because I think everyone does carry around a little bit of prejudice, but I think that might be part of the human condition, but you, you lock that away. That does not belong to the world. It doesn't belong out there because it's always offensive. First of all, and secondly, you never know when you're going to make a, a joke about a, a, a Jew or someone who is who is trans in passing, and you don't know. And so you make some sexist joke. Um, you know, someone's gay. Hey, guess what? You can't tell when most people are gay. You just by looking at them or talking to them. So you make a joke about you know homosexuality. There's it's always going to blow up in your face. It's, it's, it's mean, it's crude, it's rude. And ultimately, anyone who's out there thinking, I'm just going to slip this in, it will be funny, we'll all get a laugh. Man, no. You're going to hit somebody with it. Um, so I, th I think the world is making progress. You know, here, here on the socials, in America in particular, I think that all those prejudices exist. I think we can't deny that they're out there. But most people, thank goodness, or at least in recent years, <laughs> kept it blocked away behind walls. But if you spoke up for yourself and called it out for what it was, no one else agreed, then it is then you're just better off packing your bags and walking away and finding people who who don't make those cracks. I dare say if you're on a VTT or you're trying to meet a group in person, during your interview process, your session zero, it is absolutely fine for, for, for you, anyone, to just say, hey, I don't put up with intolerance, bigotry, racism. I'm not down for the jokes. I'm not down for the slurs. Can we just leave that all aside? If, because I don't want to be part of that group. And I think that's a conversation more and more of us really need to have. And I think that not only will it protect us, and it's easy for me to say I'm a straight white guy, right? So, But I think it'll help push back against that kind of behavior if we just call it out day one, day zero, just say, hey, FYI, I'm not down for racial slurs of any kind, and I, I don't really appreciate off-color jokes. So... I'm I'm here to have a fun time, but not at the expense of anyone else. If that's not how you guys roll, I don't want to be a part of this. And I think the more we do that, the more we can 
put people in their boxes. Yeah, like literally. <laughs> We're going to close up the lid, piece of tape. <laughs> You're all safe and secure in there with, with your hatreds. <laughs> um, but I know it's possible because of the nearly 10 people I role play with. Never, never heard a derogatory word uh, slide out, you know. And we've gotten to know each other pretty darn well at this point. So it can be done. Those people are out there who know how to just... Okay, let's continue. Jeez, that was a, that was a long aside, but yeah, yeah, we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it because you're talking about it. Okay, I immediately messaged the DM explaining what had happened and that based on this and the issues I previously brought to his attention, I would regrettably have to leave the campaign. Regrettable? Is it really? It's not regrettable. No, it's it's good for you. He got back to me a few days later and said that he was shocked. He shouldn't have been that this happened and this behavior would be tolerated whatsoever, would not be tolerated whatsoever. He apologized several times and said he understood why I wouldn't feel comfortable continuing to play whether or not Player D was kicked out. Does he kick out Player D? <laughs> so, oh, I would read the riot act to somebody who did, and just be like, you did what? It's a VTT. How... You don't know who these people are. You, uh, I, I, <laughs> oh my gosh. What did you think was going to happen? What did you think the effect of using racism and bigotry was going to be? Did everyone laugh? Was it, was it worth it? Well, I felt an immediate sense of relief having left. I had this sense of loss of my character. Maybe it's me being new or my being new, but she had done some really cool, amazing things and helped a lot of people. I spent a lot of time on her backstory and I felt, and it felt living. You brought your character to life, yeah. Since leaving, I've joined a couple of campaigns that are incredible and I really care for the people I play with now. I moved on, awesome, and was able to put this campaign out of my head. That is until two days ago, which spurred this post. The server I was in had a bunch of campaigns and one-shots happening, and, and as I began my own journey in DMing, I put out some feelers to folk, including several from the server I had been in that I had played other stuff with and still kept in contact with. I found out that not only had this player, D, player D, not been booted from the server, but was still playing in that campaign. My character had, for whatever reason, tried killing the party. <sighs> oh my god, that is a mean and nasty way to handle that breakup. And she was killed by them soon after I left. I'm not sure what I expected to happen, but it was heartbreaking and all my feelings about this campaign have resurfaced. Yeah. They backhand did you dirty. Um, and so what might have been casual bigotry, racism, whatever word we're using here. I know they don't all mean the same thing, but they're close. Enough. <laughs> what might have been passive, unintentional. Mm -hmm. yeah was quite deliberate. Um, they hoisted your character up as, as, the, as the, uh, the dummy that was in the wrong. Yeah. The victim, the target, deliberate, deliberate targeting of your character. I don't even know what, to, I've, I got nothing. That's fucked up beyond belief. This was long, both overdue, and as post all, but all of this, this was long, both overdue, and as post, but all of this to say that if you're not having fun, leave. Yes. The point of this game is to have fun and collectively work together. Yes. I wasted a lot of my time, energy, and money learning this particular lesson, and there's a better group of people out there. I ignored a lot of red flags early on and put myself through unnecessary stress, trying not to be a quitter. But trust me, you're better off. Yeah. Um, 
I I got this. Jeez, that's just unreal. Um, you got to protect yourself. You got to try and find people who will protect you, protect each other, protect others. They're out there. Uh, I, I, that was a devastating end. I didn't see that coming. I'll tell you what. That was heartbreaking. And it, it's just because... Because whatever else, people being stupid, people being intentionally mean, the fact that the entire group that you left behind mistreated your character when your character was... an analog for your concerns? It, it just, it's because it shows, it just demonstrates that for that group of people, there wasn't contrition, that it wasn't a mistake, that no one stood up in the end, that you, your character was like, not the mistake. Uh, I, I'm sorry, this is just, I got, I just, uh, fuck, they just... That was just cruel. I mean, I don't even know what to say. It, it demonstrates a full lack of regret on their part. That's what's, that's what's fucked up. Whether or not you ever found out, those people signed and sealed their, their prejudices with that, that act. Even in a bottle, even, even in... Their own closet with the door shut, the lights out, a blanket stuffed under the door so no one could hear what they were doing together. Yeah. A thing kept in the dark, but people wanting to live in the dark, people wanting to behave in the dark. Yeah. It's in people. We got to try and be better. Um, I don't think anybody's perfect, but man, you, we've got to make an effort to, uh, we got to make an effort. Th that's it. We've got to make an effort. We're not perfect and you won't always get it right in life, but for fuck's sake, make an effort. Just, <laughs> okay. If you watch, thank you. Take care.